It was late afternoon when the knock came at the door. Visitors weren't something Cassie expected, especially not unannounced like this. But Cassie pulled herself up off the couch and headed towards the door. She had to admit, she was curious who was there. It was probably just a door-to-door salesman or those damned religious people pushing their religion on others. If it were either of the two, she would tell them to kindly get lost. It was her time to relax and watch television. When Cassie pulled open the door, she was greeted by a young man wearing a white shirt and black tie. Religious nut job, no doubt. She couldn't help but wonder how many people this tactic truly converted. Did they believe surprising someone in their home and preaching at them made a difference? People did one of three things. They slammed the door in their face, pretended not to be home, or politely listened to everything the visitor had to say and then promptly threw the literature in the trash. There couldn't have ever been a person alive who converted to a new religion from a doorway visit. Can I help you? Cassie asked. Ma'am, I was wondering if maybe I could help you. Have you heard the good word? The cheery man announced. Cassie meant to tell the man to screw off and slam the door in his face. Now, staring him in the face, she realized she couldn't do it. The man seemed nice, even if he was preaching about something she had no interest in. Instead, she would politely hear him out and throw the literature away. No harm. Well, I have, as a matter of fact, Cassie said with a cheery voice. My parents were Catholic, so I know all about it. Oh, well, that's good to hear, but do you know the full story? And there it was. Cassie hated this about these people. Even if you told them you agreed with them, they still found a way to keep talking to you. It was ridiculous. She remembered a time in her youth while working as a cashier. Something similar had happened. On her lunch break, she found herself sitting at a little cafe in the retail store. An elderly man walked up to her and said hi. Being the polite person she was, she said hi back and smiled. The man then proceeded to ask her if she believed in Jesus Christ. She said yes, which wasn't a complete lie. Cassie wasn't religious, especially not as a teenager. But she did not write not believe. But to keep the man from lecturing her, she had told him yes. To her horror, the man took up an entire lunch break talking about the wonders of Jesus and God. I think I've heard the stories before. I used to go to church every Sunday with my grandparents, she said to the man now. Ah, used to. So you've fallen out of touch with the Almighty. She knew she had made a huge mistake. She wanted to slam the door in his face and be done with the encounter, but she couldn't. Cassie hated being mean, even when someone deserved it. Confrontations were not her strongest skill. I suppose you could say that, but I still believe in it all. Unfortunately, I might just be a waste of your time. Nonsense, the man said. I want to make sure you get into heaven. Some would have you believe that just accepting Jesus into your life would get you into heaven. It's not so simple. I have this brochure here. Would you allow me to read you some scripture? Before Cassie could answer, her cell phone began to ring in the other room. Like an intervention from God, she had a way out. She wasn't going to waste this chance. Cassie made a motion with her head, showing the man at the door she was about to walk away. Excuse me, I really need to take this call. It's important. The man nodded, but handed the pamphlet in his hand over. Cassie took it without a second thought. She could easily throw it away when the door was shut. She smiled as she started to shut the door. The man said something about following up with her later, but she didn't quite hear it. Next time, she would pretend not to be home or in the shower. She wouldn't open up again. When the door was shut, she raced to the other room and picked up her phone. Scam likely, the screen said. She laughed at the coincidence and tossed the phone on the end table. How many unsolicited attempts could happen at once? Taking the pamphlet the man had given her, Cassie made her way to the trash can. She tossed it in without giving it a second thought. Her conversation with the man was over, and fortunately, she would never have to endure it again. A couple of days went by, and the man never came back. Every day, she expected a knock at the door, but it never came. Thankfully, it seemed the man had forgotten all about her. After work later in the week, she checked the mail. Sitting on her couch, she sorted through it all. Most of it was junk mail and bills. But one thing stood out to her. It was an envelope addressed to her by a man named Ken. As far as she knew, she didn't know a Ken. Ripping it open, she started to read. Immediately, she groaned and rolled her eyes. The damn door-to-door Bible thumper had written her a letter all about accepting God and finding her way. Why was this crazy man writing her a letter? Who did that? He stopped at her house to preach, and she couldn't talk. He took it upon himself to write to her? It was the weirdest thing she had ever seen. 
Other people had knocked to tell her about the good word, but no one had ever sent her a letter. But she saw no harm in simply throwing the letter away. The man would never know she did. If he ever came back around, she would not answer the door. Simple as that. Unfortunately for Cassie, it would never be that simple. The next few days went ahead without incident. She expected another letter in the mail or a knock at the door. Neither came. Relieved, Cassie felt she had finally rid herself of the man. It wasn't until the following night while she was watching television that something happened. Her phone chirped with a text notification. Cassie reached for the phone and swiped up to read the message. For a few seconds, she was confused. The number was unknown, but it was addressed to her directly. Hey Cassie, I hope all is well. I wanted to check in and see how you were doing. Hopefully you've had a chance to look over that pamphlet that I left you. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to send me a text or call me. God bless. Cassie's blood turned ice cold. Ken had texted her. But how? She never gave her phone number, of that she was sure. What kind of creep searched for a person's phone number and text them without their permission? Especially a stranger who had knocked on her door once. The letter had been weird, but this topped it for sure. It was creepy, and Cassie felt unsafe. Though the man seemed to have no ill will, it was still a strange and scary thing to endure. If he could find her phone number, what else could he do? For several minutes, she shrugged with what to do. She wanted to respond and tell the man to leave her alone. Texting her without asking for her phone number was over the line. How could someone think that was okay? Especially for a strange man to do that to a single woman. It only seemed like harassment. She could see no other way to explain it. Eventually, she settled on deleting the text and pretending it never happened. If she never responded, maybe he would get the hint and leave her alone. After pressing delete, she wondered if she should have blocked the number instead. She decided it wasn't necessary. Ken would most likely never text her again. However, Cassie was wrong. Ken did text her again. This time, it had nothing to do with the pamphlet or Jesus or anything. In fact, it was bizarre. Cassie wasn't sure if she should delete the text and block the number or call the police and have the man committed. He surely seemed to be out of his mind. She couldn't make a clear thought out of the text. Mad makes me it. Me ignores people when it like don't I. That done hadn't you wish I. Trash, the M pamphlet my through you and message text my ignored you. The text read. She scanned it over and over looking for any sort of sense. There was none to be found. Cassie had picked out key words like ignore, pamphlet, trash, and text. She thought she understood the gist of what he was saying. Ken was mad that she ignored his text message and threw away his pamphlet. Only, how did he know she threw it away? Her blood ran cold when she realized the man was probably watching her. Pulling her phone to her eyes, she typed out the words, I'm calling the police. Before she could hit send, the man's text caught her eye again. This time, she realized there was a complete thought written out before it. Ken had sent the text backward. Bizarre behavior indeed. You ignored my text message, and you threw my pamphlet in the trash. I wish you hadn't done that. I don't like it when people ignore me. It makes me mad. Now that she could read the text, she gasped. It sounded like a threat if ever she heard one. She was definitely calling the police now. Pressing send on the text, Cassie switched over to the dial pad and pressed 911. It rang for less than a second before a monotone voice broke over the end. Before Cassie could speak, however, a gloved hand wrapped tightly around her mouth. She let out a muffled cry, hoping the dispatcher would hear her. A second gloved hand grabbed her cell phone and pressed end call. In a few seconds, your phone is going to ring again. It will be the police. They always call back when you hang up. You're going to tell them you accidentally dialed and panicked, hanging up before you thought they would answer. If you say anything else, I will kill you. She didn't need to turn around to know who it was. Somehow... Ken had broken into her home and now held her hostage. Tears ran down her cheeks when the phone rang again. He had been right. They were calling back. Ken handed the cell phone over and removed the hand from her mouth. He stood close by as she slid the green indicator, answering the call. H hello she answered, trying to sound scared. Ma'am, we received a call from this number and I hang up. Is everything okay? Cassie struggled. She wanted to tell the dispatcher nothing was okay. There was a man in her home with what she assumed was a knife pressed against her back. If she said anything to alert the police, she would be dead. She had every reason to believe the man. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, sorry about that, she said. It, it was, uh, an accident. Uh, I was hoping to hang up before you, uh, answered. She pleaded with the dispatcher on the other end to sense something was wrong. Hear it in her speech pattern. Something was off. She had to hear it. 
Cassie begged God in her mind to send this woman a message. Ma'am, if you're in a position where you can't say anything but you're in danger, say you're sorry to have disturbed us. Cassie couldn't blurt the words out fast enough. Thank God, the person on the other end had sensed the danger she was in. Cassie nearly yelled, I'm sorry to disturb you. I understand. I will have police dispatched to your location, right? Ken snatched the phone from her hand and smashed it beneath his boot. Cassie turned around to face the man, hoping he had not heard the other end of the conversation. The look on his face told her he had. Why did you have to go and do something like that? You could have been the one. But now, I have to end it here. Please, just leave me alone, Cassie screamed. The police are on their way. If you run now, you might get away. Please, go. Ken stared at her with a wild look in his eyes. Spittle hung from his lips and his eyes glossed over like he had drifted to some distant memory. Cassie took the opportunity to run. Within seconds, the man gave chase. As Cassie ran for the front door, she dared a glance behind her. The man galloped on all fours like a cheetah. He snarled and screamed at her like a wild animal. Cassie screamed and bolted out the house. She felt her lungs would burst as she ran into the street and cried for help. A neighbor across the street ripped open their front door to see what the matter was. He witnessed the bizarre scene and immediately rushed to Cassie's aid, but it was too late. Ken had leaped an impossible distance and tackled the woman to the ground. He dug his teeth into her shoulder and tore flesh from bone. Cassie screamed out in pain as the neighbor rushed towards Ken. He tackled the wild man to the ground, but it had been a mistake. Ken ran both hands into the soft part of the neighbor's stomach and ripped it open. The neighbor staggered for a moment before collapsing to the ground. Ken whipped his head back towards Cassie and smiled. Blood oozed from her wound and she crawled backward away from Ken. I think I was wrong, he said. You taste like the one. Ken pounced again. When the police arrived a few minutes later, they found a pool of blood where Cassie had been and the body of her neighbor. All signs of Cassie or her attacker were gone. Forensics found nothing at the crime scene and the case would eventually go unsolved. Her face was plastered all over the news, and manhunts were conducted to find her, or at least her remains. But nothing was ever found. Though, one person did eventually see Cassie again. Except, she didn't recognize her as the missing woman. It had been several months since Cassie's face had graced television screens. Blair smiled at the woman standing in her doorway holding a pamphlet in her hand. Excuse me, the woman said. Do you have a moment to talk about your salvation? 